Alright everyone, welcome back to my channel, Baseball Talk with Nick Morgan. Today we're talking about the American League and National League Rookie of the Year Award. So, we have the results of the first, like, updated ballots with the three players from the American League and the three players from the National League. They have been voted for, and if the season were to end today, we would know who's going to get the AL and NL Rookie of the Year. Now, in recent years, this has been a very tight race. Last year in the American League, you had Andujar, Torres, and Otani. Two years ago, you had Judge and Bellinger win AL and NL Rookie of the Year awards, respectively. And to be honest, this race is always really fun, and I enjoy watching these young guys come up because you get to see these superstars or people who could be superstars play with veterans and your favorite players and hopefully bring your team to a World Series victory. Now, we're going to talk about the six candidates um, again, how many votes they got, their stats, and whether I think this will change by the end of the season or not. So starting off in the American League, we have the three candidates of Brandon Lowe, uh, Michael Chavez, and Spencer Turnbull. Now, I don't know if I pronounced Brandon's last name right. It's either Lowe or Lau. It's spelled L-O-W-E, and he is the Tampa Bay Rays second baseman. Now, I know this guy because he's beat up on the New York Yankees a little bit this season, um, costed them a win, but... Uh, I didn't really know how good he was, and there were a couple other guys as well where I wasn't sure who they were and what they were really capable of, because I haven't just watched enough games uh, with them involved. So, this actually technically isn't uh, the first year he's playing Major League Baseball. Last year, he appeared in 43 games. I don't know what the cutoff is, though, how many you can play without... Uh, being classified as a rookie. It also happened to Gary Sanchez, I believe, uh, back when he first debuted. The season that was was not his official uh, um, rookie of the year season or rookie season. So again, I don't know what that cutoff is, uh, but it's obviously not under 40 games because um, Brendan Lowe did have that uh, last year. So we're going to talk about his stats here now. And in 2019, the guy is 24 years old, by the way. He's 148 at-bats. He's hitting 291 with 10 home runs, 27 RBIs, and 3 stolen bases. He's also got himself an OPS of .909. Now, this guy has more home runs than some guys who have been playing in the league for years now at this point in time. And like I did say, this is not his first season, so his MLB career stats are a little different. He has 277 total plate appearances, or at-bats, rather. He's hitting 264 with 16 home runs, 52 RBIs, 5 stolen bases, and a .846 OPS. So not including uh, this year, he has 2 stolen bases, uh, roughly 6 home runs, and he was hitting a little uh, less than, I would say, about 270 um, as of 2018. I don't know his exact 2018 stats. But this guy is really good, and putting him up against Michael Chavez from the Red Sox and Spencer Turnbull, it looks like he is going to win the favorite. He received 79.4% of votes. He had 26 first place votes uh, from the guys voting this time around. And will that change? I'm not sure just yet. I think he will end up getting the award. It might be a little bit closer of a race between him and Chavez if he does continue to stay hot. And by him, I do mean Michael uh, because this guy's been really good lately. He's been on a tear. So actually, moving over to him. Michael Chavez, the Red Sox second baseman, he received 38.3% of votes. He had seven first place votes. And, um, well, this guy has 98 at bats. He's hitting 296 with nine home runs, 24 RBIs, two solo bases, and a .981 OPS. So kind of similar numbers to Brandon. And in less at bats, about 50 less at bats, he has one less home run, three less RBIs, and one less stolen base. He does have a higher OPS, and his average is a little higher as well. So if Michael can actually keep this up, he might go ahead and creep up in front of Brandon Lau for the first place AL Rookie of the Year title. Um, but really, we can't tell just yet. I don't know who it's going to go to. Again, I would say maybe Brandon because we've seen more playing time from him. But that might not be the case. You might be surprised like last year. I wasn't really expecting Shohei Otani to win. I wouldn't have been surprised if he did, but I wasn't sure who was going to get it. And you never know. I mean, you just got the first ever unanimous Hall of Fame uh, candidate in Mariano Rivera this year. So anything can happen when it comes to baseball voting. Now, when we go to the last American League candidate, you have Spencer Turnbull, right-handed pitcher from the Detroit Tigers. Now, I have not heard of this guy, probably because he's young and I don't follow the Tigers uh, much, if at all. He received 23.3% of 
votes, but he had zero first place votes. So no one really thinks he's going to get first place. And as a pitcher, it's going to be a little harder because you have to have a very consistent, very good uh, season all the way throughout. And if you get hurt or something, that could kind of throw off your chances, especially when you're getting guys who are going to play almost every game or, you know, five out of seven games uh, in a set. And if we look at Spencer Turnbull's stats, he is a right-handed pitcher for the Tigers. He has nine games under his belt in 2019. He is 2-3 two with a 2.40 ERA, 48.2 innings pitched, 50 strikeouts, and a 1.25 whip. Now, he has also appeared in a couple games before 2019. He has appeared in four other games, but in total, he is a 2-5 and five record, a 3.32 ERA, 65 innings pitched, 65 strikeouts, and a 1.26 whip. I personally think we can count Spencer Turnbull out uh, from this race. Not saying anything bad about him, I just don't think he's going to be able to go ahead and beat uh, the two other guys in the American League. So with that being said, we're going to head over to the National League now, and we have some very good candidates here, uh, if you do say so myself. I mean, the first guy we have is Chris Paddock, Padres' right-handed pitcher. Now, this guy has caused some beef with another candidate, New York Mets um, first baseman Pete Alonso. But if we really look at his stats, the guy's a beast, and he is very young. He received 82.8% of votes, 24 first-place votes with that being said, and that means only 17.2% of votes were shared between Pete Alonso and Alex Verdugo of the Dodgers. All three of these guys are very big names, and if we look at uh, Paddock's stats, he has nine games in 2019 so far with a 4-2 and two record, a 1.93 whip, 51.1 innings pitched, 56 strikeouts, and a whip of 0 0.76. If I did say whip before, I meant 1.93 ERA. My apologies. Paddock is only 23 years young, and the Padres are definitely a team trying to go ahead and get something going. Of course, they signed Mandy Machado for $300 million um, right towards the end of the offseason, and now they potentially have the National League Rookie of the Year on their team as well. And this guy is looking like an ace at a very young age. So if Chris Paddock keeps this up throughout his entire career, this guy is definitely going to be a guy to watch. I'm really excited. This is actually really cool. I thought Pete Alonso would have been in first, um, but didn't realize how Paddock was performing so well. And that's another thing I didn't mention before. Um, I don't know if he was going to necessarily keep this up. It might just be a good start. Who knows, maybe after the All-Star game, things might be different. Maybe even within the next couple of weeks, he could play completely different, and that could bring him down a lot more in voting uh, percentages and first place votes, but we'll have to see. I mean, it all kind of depends on, um, you know, what the executives think, what the people who are voting think. At the moment, this guy deserves it, though. If we move over to Pete Alonso, like I said, first baseman for the New York Mets, everybody knows this guy. He just hit his, what was it, 15th home run yesterday. And I think it was like 415, 416 feet. Uh, he received 48.3% of votes, 6% uh, of first place votes. And, um, you know, this guy, you look at him, he doesn't look like a power hitter. He doesn't really look like he's that good defensively at first, but this guy really surprises you from every angle. In 2019, he has 166 at-bats. He's hitting 259 with 15 home runs, 35 RBIs, no stolen bases, and a .934 OPS. I mean, he's 24, so kind of similar in age with Chris Paddock, but this guy's a slugger, and the New York Mets have really needed him and he's been a good prospect for them for a while now he got called up finally he's in the mlb and he's performing up to everyone's expectations if not exceeding them so will he go ahead and get that change of uh pace and get into first place eventually potentially win the nl rookie of the year i think it is possible if he can keep up uh up this really good start to a season and kind of outplay Chris Paddock, even though it's going to be difficult because you have a pitcher and um, an offensive guy kind of going at it. Um, you know, you can't really score them the same. It kind of comes down to, well, who has helped their team more, Pete Alonso or Chris Paddock? And, well, if Paddock's throwing six innings, maybe five, maybe seven, and he's, like, shutting people out, getting a lot of strikeouts, it's going to be him at the end of the day. Your final candidate for the National League Rookie of the Year is Alex Rudu of the Dodgers. He's an outfielder who received 30.6% of votes, 
three first place votes, so not a lot, but this guy's also really good. He has had time in Major League Baseball for the start of the 2019 season. In 2019, it's 124 at bats, a 323 average, which is crazy considering we're in late May at this point. Four home runs, 23 RBIs, two stolen bases, and a .903 OPS. So nothing crazy really sticks out at you here other than the average. I mean, the home run total isn't very high. Um, and the at-bats and the average kind of correlate. 323, is that surprising with only 124 at-bats? Who knows? In his career, he has 224 at-bats. He's hitting 286 with six home runs, 28 RBIs, two stolen bases, and a .798 OPS. So I don't really see this guy going ahead and getting the NL Rookie of the Year, but he's a good candidate and he deserves the props and all that he is doing for the Dodgers. Now this last thing I'm going to kind of talk about here is whether or not I think pitchers and offensive guys or regular defensive players uh, should be uh, voted together for one National League or American League Rookie of the Year award. I personally do not think so. I think what Major League Baseball could do or should do is make an AL NL Rookie of the Year Cy Young or just Pitcher of the Year uh, when it comes to like rookies. They'd have to of course play with the name or something, but you know, a pitcher cannot do what an outfielder does offensively or defensively and vice versa. So you can't really judge them the same. You can't go ahead and um, put them both, you know, one or two. You have to pick one of them for your team because they bring a both. Uh, they both bring different aspects to your team fundamentally and you're going to need them. So I do get that you can vote for, I'm pretty sure, multiple candidates. Um, however, I just think it's kind of different because Shohei Otani last year and Labor Torres, they were very close in the voting, but Shohei Otani was able to pitch and hit, you know, two-way guy. We haven't seen that in almost 100 years, so of course he was going to get it over Torres. Uh, is that really fair though? Because Torres can't pitch. So it kind of depends. I personally think they could make a second award. But guys, that is going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to drop a like down below, comment, and subscribe. But let me know down below in the comment section who you think is going to win the AL and NL Rookie of the Year. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Peace.